Hello, and welcome to Conservation Skills in 10 Minutes or Less. This series of short, skill-based videos is brought to you by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's National Conservation Training Center in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. If you have a couple of minutes, pull up a chair and pick up a new conservation skill or maybe refresh an old one on topics ranging from fish culture to bird identification to stream restoration. Enjoy. Hello. My name is Matthew Patterson and I'm a course leader at the National Conservation Training Center. And I'm going to lead you through this skill exercise today. So what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about algae culture for freshwater mussel propagation. Well, why are we propagating freshwater mussels and why are we growing algae to help this process? Well, freshwater mussels are one of the most imperiled groups of organisms in the world. Only about 20% of the populations are currently stable. As a result, there are a lot of facilities that are growing juvenile freshwater mussels for recovery of endangered populations. As you can see from this video, these tiny little young juvenile mussels like to eat algae. You notice the brownish green color, that's their gut. That's why it's that color because we like to feed them algae early on in their life history. When they grow up, they get big enough that we can put a tag on them. We can release them to the wild and help recover populations. So this skill is actually a series of six videos that will lead you through how to culture algae for freshwater mussel propagation. And this is installment number one. After you watch all the videos in the series, and want to learn more, you can take some of our courses on freshwater mussels at the National Conservation Training Center. We have freshwater mussel propagation for restoration, freshwater mussel identification, and conservation biology of freshwater mussels. So thanks for joining us. After you watch all these videos, if you have any questions about freshwater mussels, about algae culture, or about any course at the National Conservation Training Center, you can contact me at the phone number and email provided below. Thank you. The video segments that you're about to watch are produced by the National Conservation Training Center with assistance from the staff at White Sulphur Springs National Fish Hatchery in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia. And it's sort of designed to provide you some basic introduction to how to grow algae for freshwater mussel propagation. Now you can provide food to juvenile freshwater mussels in a variety of ways. You can provide wild water, say from a river source, you can provide pond water, or you can grow uni algal cultures in the laboratory. This series of videos will provide you the techniques for growing those uniagal cultures for raising juveniles in a, in a captive environment. The methods used in these videos were produced by Drs. David Orcott and Pam Orcott under contract with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service while at uh, White Sulphur Springs National Fish Hatchery. And the videos are just going to walk you through the basics of sterile technique and also how to grow algae in a stepwise fashion so that you start with a small slant culture and work it up to much larger and larger quantities until you have enough algae to feed freshwater mussels in captivity. So as you're watching these videos, there's a companion manual that goes along with it that will provide some specifics on how to grow media and some other specifics on uh, sterile technique and that kind of thing. So page numbers will pop up in the video that will reference that manual. So go ahead and grab your Erlenmeyer flasks in your pipettes and come on down and grow some algae. It's important when you're working with algae cultures and growing algae that you use sterile technique in a sterile environment. Especially when we're talking about slants, either transferring from one slant to another or transferring from a slant to the flask culture, that you do it in this sterile environment. And this is a laminar flow hood that uh, works really well and how this works is instead of a traditional fume hood 
that sucks air in so that you're not breathing in any chemicals. This actually blows air towards you so that no contaminants are coming from the air into the culture system. Now, when you want to start using one of these, you want to make sure it's good and sterile before you bring any uh, algae cultures into it. So the first thing I'll do is spray it down with some 70% uh, isopropanol, just covering all the surfaces really well. <clears throat> I'll take some chem wipes and then just wipe it down really good, Ster sterilize the surfaces as best you can, including the walls, the back wall, and the, the tabletop. Also this uh, facial plate here on the inside, just make sure everything you get covered with uh, isopropanol. And then there's a, two options up here for light. Turn on the UV, and that will continue to sterilize the internal environment, and turn on the blower system. And that starts the flow of air out. Then I'll leave it like this for about 10 or 15 minutes before any algae cultures come in, just to make sure this is good and sterile. And then make sure when you come back after the end of that 15 minutes that you cut this UV light off because it's, it's not good to either look into the UV or work in the UV light. And all you do is switch the UV to off and then the other side is just a regular fluorescent light. Obviously one of the critical parts of algae culture is providing them with media or fertilizer basically is, is what, it, what it is. And so usually that stuff comes when you order it, it comes as a powder and you have to prepare that material. So it kind of depends on what kind of media that you're getting is that is the how you're going to prepare it. So just follow those instructions. But if you're just using standard F2 that has a vitamin pack that's separate, you don't have to worry about aseptic technique when you're making this media because you're going to autoclave it at a really high temperature and sterilize it after the fact anyway. If you're using it, it with the vitamins included already, vitamins cannot be autoclaved because it'll uh, denature the vitamins and make them not usable. So if that were the case, you would have to be doing this preparation in, in the hood using aseptic technique to make sure that you're not contaminating. And you would have to start also with water that's already been uh, sterilized. And we like to use uh, deionized water that's, that's been sterilized. So then when you're under the hood, you'd have this whole apparatus under the hood and you'd add your sterile water and your nutrients and then you know that it's, that it's sterile. But again, if your vitamins are separate, you can just do this out anywhere because you know that you're gonna autoclave it after the fact anyway. So as I mentioned, <clears throat> there's different media that's available that you can use to grow algae. In this case, we're, we're using just standard F2 media that you can get uh, pretty much anywhere. Um, but we found that the standard F2 is deficient in a few essential nutrients. So we also make uh, two other uh, nutrient additions to the F2. One we call essential nutrients one, and the other is essential nutrients two. And all that, the, uh, the recipes for that will be in the, in the notebook. And you just add all those in together. If you're growing a diatom, and we do grow one uh, diatom uh, here, you're going to want to use silicate. They have silica in their cell walls, so you have to, you have to add the silicate to the, to the culture as well. So you can get by with just F2 for most things, but you might, if you're looking for really healthy cultures and fast grow rates, you might want to look into this EN1 and EN2 as well. And then if you're growing a diatom, you need to add some silicate. And of course, you can see on the bottle, that's that autoclave tape with the black lines. All of this has been, been sterilized before the inoculum is added. Thanks again for joining us for Conservation Skills in 10 Minutes or Less. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, or hit the subscribe button, share this video with a friend, or even check out one of the many other skill-based videos we have in this series. Have a great day, and always remember, the beautiful thing about learning is that no one can take it away from you.